Good morning, everybody. It's Chris here from Student Education with the Four Majors Notice Update for the 18th of July, 2011. I hope you had a fantastic weekend with family and friends, all relaxed and ready to trade the following week. Um, overnight, Euro, we had some movements to the downside. Still looking pretty at the moment now. And our first target would look, initial target looks at 1,400, 1,3900. It's going to there because we've been in the past. Let's have a look at the daily. Intermediate low swings going into this trade. We have bounced off uh, to off off a major downtrend. That's been short lived because we saw a massive uh, a, a load of buying in the market and we saw price closing higher on well closing in indecisive. But we saw end of last week, majority of last week, seeing price action to the upside and going not kind of making it back up or, or ground levels where we thought we would probably see further extensions. Notice, however, the price action as we speak. We saw this massive shooting star after a bullish up candle, but fairly to clear and trading higher than the two prior swings here, just roughly around the one, the 14, 1800 mark. And doing so in decision are uh, the sat uh, Friday, apologies. And we saw the Asian market open slightly lower than that close we saw on Friday and subsequently we are trading lower going into the European session this morning. So that extension there, so what I've done is I've taken the FIB projection from that high point when the price started and we've seen the bounce. Now ideally we could see these areas as our targets. Um, I, I, ideally back to the 1400 mark would possibly be our, our, our first time target because uh, we, we've had a uh, slight hesitation on this line um, for a major, well, o over a long period of time, and that's ideally going to be our first target. Second target, we we saw price crash through there not so long ago, back down to 13,950, which ha 900, which happens to be the 200 period institutional moving average. So that could be our second target. And then notice all the other targets, uh, 61.8. At the bottom end of this, another one here, this consolidation, 100% will take us back to the prior swing, a noticeable swing, back down at 1355, and lo and behold, one right down at 161.8, right down here at the previous swing we saw back in December of 2010. As it sees now, you can see now, we are seeing a, a negative move to the downside. It is still seeming that a lot of people out there, institutional wise, do not think, seem to think that uh, things in Europe are, are looking good long term. Uh, money's been chucked at it, not a problem, but it doesn't seem to be adding up. And sure enough, we are still seeing this bearishness in the market, and we are seeing a continuation to the downside because of that. Sentiment long term is looking negative, and sure enough, we are seeing it priced on charts. The setups are there. This over here, for example, should have seen higher highs. This buying of the market at a time when we really thought that the market really fell out. We started seeing news or hearing news about Italy and Spain on the table. But somehow, somewhere, someone was buying against that with a lot of momentum. And sure enough, we saw this massive bullish engulfing. However, this did not materialize. On, bullish mater uh, on this bullish engulfing, we needed to see another candle. Ideally, this candle here. Uh, close higher than this price support, which would give us an indication that we were going to look at the intermediate trend high or trend line as our next possible target. That failed too because we saw price rally. Yes, it did. It, 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 it traded higher. Don't get me wrong. But however, but price action by the end of the day, US session wise, was trading at the lower end of the week at a resistance level. This is where candlesticks come into, into, into its own shooting star after an uptrend. Notice it be an uptrend and these candlesticks only occur at prior support and resistance levels. They work far better at support and resistance. They don't work in the middle of trends etc. They only work at the top end or the lower end of trends. So there we have shooting star exhaustion candle at a strong resistance level and sure enough price was failed to break higher than that and we saw a confirmation down candle from that. So looking for shorting opportunities uh, is all you should be looking for in Europe at the moment now until further notice. And over to Sterling SES dollar. 
like the Euro for example, we have seen this pair testing an intermediate trend recently and forming lower swings and sure enough we've seen price falling lower. There you go, you can see it, intermediate trend down. This pair has broken through a major resistance not too long ago, a major uptrend. And sure enough, we've seen price falling subsequently lower because of that. We saw a pullback and continuation, then another pullback at a very strong support and resistance. So psychologically, a lot of people out there were looking at the 1600 as a long-term support and resistance level. It held on, moved slightly forward, or consolidated to the upside. That consolidation was short-lived because what it did was it tested, it tested the underside of a prior strong support area. There we go, very strong bounce on two occasions. Failure there and then rallied higher. However, that rally was short-lived because it was now testing the intermediate. We had a, a doji pattern at this resistance level. So now we need a decision candle, ideally lower. Price is trading at the lower end of the wick. It's, clo it's open lower and it's trading lower. This shooting star, price action more at the bottom end of the wick. Even though it was it up, it still closed higher up. It fell to close higher than this intermediate trend line and it's trading below the prior swings now. So price needs to continue with that and, and, and push it lower to see further extensions lower. Ideally back down towards 1600 would be our, our initial target. Notice the CTC is still red across the board. We have got a blue heads up candle. That's primarily because we are cautious, playing caution to the wind because we are trading at, an, at a long term or well, intermediate long term resistance level. This candle needs to close higher than that resistance level, breaking above 16200 to give us indication of further upside movement and we'll be retesting. Our first target would be the underside of this major uptrend that we've broken through recently. So, down in negativity, see if we can find for opportunities. Ideally, a, um, a, a trade lower than Friday's close, this doji. Uh, at the lower end of the wick here, it's 16079. Look for possible targets. To the downside and look at 1600 as a possible target for this pair. We need to see price. So this is to be bullish. It needs to be closing higher than this indecision candle. After a doji, we need to see a decision, ideally a decision candle, to see further extensions or trading opportunities. Failure to see the decision candle, we won't be trading till such time. So heads up, resistance, indecision. I'm looking for possible shorting opportunities because of that, because we have this strong, uh, this candle here, we have to see price trading higher than this prior resistance and support here. So, gonna have to do quite a lot of work in order to be looking fairly bullish, because we have this massive resistance level in play here. Okay, setting level in play. Swiss franc, the US dollar against Swiss franc is our next one on the daily, let's have a look. Well, we know that we are very much in an extended downtrend on this pair. Lower highs uh, dictating lower swings, which dictate a downtrend, a noticeable downtrend. We've broken through a price support and resistance level not too long ago, and we're trading lower. A lot of indecision going into the past couple of days, hence the candlesticks, the wicks. A lot of indecision. Open and closes are quite close together. Uh, and consolidating, you can see that we have a massive down candle followed by three days now of indecision. A lot of price action occurring either top end or mid sentence. US dollar also going through a bit of a crux at the moment now. They're trying to thrash out um, in the hierarchies about trying to come up with this, um, how would you call it, trying to extend their, their loan facility. Uh, the US is trading or has borrowed as much as it can, a fourteen trillion dollar ceiling level has been reached, and they're trying to see if they can actually extend it, or how they're going to come back and start paying back all of this stuff now. And there's a lot of backwards and forwards, and there's a lot of indecision now amongst all the the, the people out there in the states, and getting a bit uh, hot winded. The Democrats and Republicans in Congress trying to negotiate, trying to raise the country's fourteen point three trillion dollar debt ceiling but is it going to be approved um, is it going to be approved this is the question on everybody's lips at the moment now and obviously that's uh, another the other big issue 
um, other than Eurozone is the US dollar debt issue. So we're seeing a lot of indecisiveness. There's also problems with Swiss franc um, possibilities. There's, there's word going around that there could be intervention yet again by the Swiss government. Because they don't want to see their currency trading at an all-time high because then it affects their, their import and export figures locally because the Eurozone countries will not do business with them because of the strength of their currency. So there's a detriment to that side too. So a lot of things happening at the moment now. Um, yes, it's it's nothing good. But if you look at the trend, looking at the swings and stuff like that, you'll notice that we are getting this hesitation at a support. Just a, a quick glimpse. It's just a support top area on the underside of a prior swing. Bounce. So heads up, consolidation. Ideally, a nice bearish engulfing would definitely confirm that we've seen the breakout, consolidation, and the continuation. Though to see that, then we could see a possible bounce to the upside, um, probably 38 points or the 50% retracement figure being looked at before we see further extensions lower. As it stands now, CCC is negative. However, we're seeing trading on the under, upside of the candle, and we've got the support here. So look to see if there's possibly a potential bounce. However, the more news that comes out with the US dollar and the more problems they have with the with the members of Congress failing to come to a, uh, an agreement, then we're going to see further downside movement for the US dollar in the weeks to come. The last pair of the day is US dollar against Japanese yen and here again this pair had been trading in a consolidation range for so many months. Consecutive months just going sideways Definitely a support area of some sort there, bar this intervention breakout uh, that we saw in early April. However, you can see the price is moving sideways, highs are getting lower. Excuse the breakout here. This is the intervention breakout for the G7 and, and the yen purchase, purchasing US dollars and selling its own currency to try and strengthen, but that failed to materialize, and then we had the whole crisis in Japan with the earthquake and following tsunami that. Uh, raised a lot of destruction within the country and then we saw the US dollar back going back into this consolidation range against the yen and then just recently a breakout a very strong breakout negative breakout to the downside this is the filtration of, of all the bad news coming out of the US dollar um, relating to um, the Americans trading or trying to raise their debt ceiling had traded their full capital and now there was talk that there's issues trying to get that raised or some sort of um, feasible, um, what's the word I'm looking for, way of actually dealing with it. They have two things, they can either start cutting back quite a lot which is going to reflect negatively on the markets or they can start raising the, the, their ceiling which is also going to reflect negatively in the market because you're just moving the goalposts as such which doesn't work really well long term. So as you can see now we've seen a slight consolidation after a breakout. It's still consolidating around a prior support. Yeah, at the 78, 80 mark, 90 mark. Break lower than that. You've seen the indecisive candle on Friday. Very, very small range. We're trading at the low end of the wick going into the European session. If we break lower than that 78, 80 mark, then we're going to be looking for further extensions. Lower CTC is in our favor for further downside movement. So we have broken a a major trend to the downside. We have con seen consolidation. Are we going to see a push lower on that consolidation figure? A break lower and close lower than 7880 would definitely confirm further downside movement. And we could possibly look at 77 because we've been in the past at the end of the long long term wick. It would be our daily our next target for this pair. So look for shorting opportunities on the US dollar, Japanese yen. Ideally close below 7880 before we see any opportunities to trade lower. That's it for today, guys. I hope you have a fantastic trading day, the first session of the week. Please, please make sure that you you trade with the correct money management rules. You have a decent entry and exit strategy. Always important when you're trading. And most importantly, enjoy your trading. Keep it simple and trade serenely.